Praise the Lord. I greet all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a great privilege to be together here on this platform uh, to glorify God and to listen to his word and pray for each other. Let's turn now to the word of God. And may the Holy Spirit minister to each one of us this day. Let's turn to Job chapter 10 and verse 1 to 3. My soul loathes my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Show me why you contend with me. Does it seem good to you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands and smile on the counsel of the wicked? Now this day we are going to think about the purpose that God has brought us into this world for. Sometimes when we go through difficult circumstances in our lives, several types of persecutions, we can get bitter in our hearts. And we read about a man who went through a lot of bitterness in his life. Now when there is bitterness in us, it will come out in some way, in one way or the other it will come out. Some people get bitter with other people and some are very meek. So they just bottle it up inside themselves. But we see here a man who is giving free reign to all the bitterness that is there inside of him. He has suffered a lot and he's speaking to his friends and also to God. And he says that my soul loathes my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. Now he's letting it out all. And sometimes it is good to let everything out. But it should be done in a right way so that, you know, God can heal the bitterness that is there in us and the wounds that are there in us. Now, some wounds that people get in their lives are very deep. And some of them, they get it in their childhood itself or when they are growing up as adults in their teenager years. And that wound remains for a long time. It takes, only Jesus can heal such wounds. Only God Almighty can heal such wounds. Now, when I prayed about the message today, yesterday night, the Lord showed me about a man who had a deep wound in his body. And it was very difficult to heal because the wound was so deep and it was festering and there were, it was rotting. It's very difficult for such a person to receive a healing. And here we are talking about the wounds that we receive on our spirit and our soul and our minds. This man here, Job, is suffering in his body too. In every way, he is in suffering and he speaks in the bitterness of his soul. He wants to tell God, do not condemn me. Show my, why you are contending with me. The thing is, if you have a good relationship with God, if you are close to him, then you can let it out all in the presence of God because he is always willing to hear everything that we have inside of us. Actually, God wants to have great fellowship with us. He wants to know the deepest things that are there in our hearts. But often we you know, get, do not get into that kind of a relationship with God. For some Christians, God is very distant. He's not a God who is near. Some people can identify themselves with Jesus very well, but they cannot identify with God the Father because they do not know Him so much. But then He's our Father in heaven and He sent His only Son to earth so that we could be redeemed from all our sins and our unrighteousness. So if you are having bitterness in your heart because of a lot of wounds that are there that you have suffered in the past. Now God wants to heal those wounds too, but you have to let it out in His presence. We read about a woman who went through a lot of bitterness in her life. Today I'll be speaking about her. Her name is Naomi and we read about her in the book of Ruth. If you turn to the book of Ruth chapter 1, we read about five things that Naomi speaks about God, what God did in her life. And all the things that she speaks about are bad things. It's nothing that the Lord did good in her life. All the five things that she, she speaks about God Almighty is that He did bad things in her life. If you turn to Ruth chapter 1 and verse 13, the first thing that she says is, if you read verse 13, 
No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. That's the first thing that she speaks about God because of all that she has experienced in her life. And we cannot blame her because she has gone through too many bad things in her life. We cannot say it is because of her sins or people, you know, accuse other people when they are suffering, you know, without knowing what they are going through. And we cannot accuse Naomi of what she is suffering, saying that it is because of her sins or the sins of her family or the sins of her ancestors. She says that the hand of the Lord has gone out against her. We know about the story about Naomi and her husband. How they went to the land of Moab from Bethlehem because there was a famine in the land during the time of the judges. The judges were ruling during those days. There was no king. And the last verse of the book of Judges says that everyone did as they felt was right. Everyone did as they wanted to do because there was no king and they had no specific purpose in their lives. So he's, there is a genuine reason for her and her family to go to the land of Moab. There's a great famine in Bethlehem and they travel to the land of Moab thinking that they will receive food there, provisions there. And for a while it was good in their lives. But then we read that her husband died. And then she is left with her two sons, Mahalon and Kilion. Elimelech died. She is left with Mahalon and Kilion. They marry. And she has two daughter-in-laws. But after a while, both the sons die. Ten years, after ten years, both the sons die. And then she is left with her daughters-in-law. Now, if you look at her life, she went with a purpose to the land of Moab because there was a lack of provision. We cannot blame her. We do not know how her husband died or how her sons died in that land. But something bad happened in her life. And because of all that happened in her life, she is getting bitter inside. Sometimes we may not realize the bitterness that is there inside of us unless certain circumstances come into our life. But the thing is, the bitterness in, his, in our life is evident to other people, either in the way that we speak or in the way that we deal with others. Praise the Lord. As I said before, some people are a bit meek, so they do not let it out on other people at their workplace or outsiders. But then they let it out all on the members of their family. Maybe it is on their wife or on their children. Somehow this bitterness comes out and is evident to other people. Some people are more outgoing, so, you know, they let it out on other people, maybe at work or other places, less on their family. But whatever it is, the bitterness will be seen in our lives, in the way that we speak, in the way that we deal with others. Here she starts off by telling her daughters, It grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. We read about many people for whom the hand of the Lord was good upon their lives. If you go to the book of Ezra, Ezra says many times that the hand of the Lord was upon him. The good hand of the Lord was upon him. If you read Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6, we read about Ezra. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He came as an exile from the land of Babylon. He was coming back to Jerusalem. And here the Bible says that he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So sometimes we may feel in certain seasons of our life that the good hand of the Lord is upon our lives. But then certain other times we may feel as Naomi has felt in her life and she says, that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Praise the Lord. And many people had come back from Babylon with Ezra and he was a scribe who wrote down all the things and he was also a teacher. And many times in, his, in this book we read that he says, the hand of the Lord was upon my life. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 27, Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers who has put such a thing as in the king's heart 
to beautify the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem and has extended mercy to me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes. So I was encouraged as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So sometimes we may feel that the Lord is with us and he is doing good to us and is blessing us and leading us and guiding us. But at other times of our life, we see that we are in a wilderness. As Moses was in the wilderness and many other people of God, as we read in the word of God, who were in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. But God has a specific purpose for our lives. The more I think about not doing ministry, the more deeper I go into it. That is what I have seen in my life. Sometimes you know, it's already, already around 27 years that I have been in the ministry. Many times I think that I should stop doing more. That I should cut down on what I am doing for the Lord. But the next few days I see that I will be doing more for the Lord. It's something like, you know, being sucked into a you know, vortex or a black hole. I sometimes wonder what is that. <laughs> Some nights I think about, you know, not doing anything the next day for the Lord, sitting quietly, just reading the word of God. Sometimes I think about a retired life, how it will be. Praise the Lord. But the next day, it will be different. Because something that the Holy Spirit does inside of you. Something that you cannot fathom. Something that you cannot understand. So yesterday night, I had a very bad night. Actually, a lot of acidity and reflux. I was sitting up uh, till midnight. And uh, I had some allergies on my body. That was, that was also an issue. And then I was not very happy about the things that were happening because I had to preach today. And this has happened on so many occasions. So what do you expect uh, in a night like this? I would expect God to comfort me, God to uh, give me a good night's rest, peace and all, the, all those things. Somehow I dozed off around uh, 1 o'clock and what do I see? I see a dream. I see a dream in which, you know, there's a big accident and a lot of people are suffering and bleeding and all that. And then I had to sit up and pray for all those people. So I was just thinking, but I've got used to all these things. I would think that the Lord would comfort me and give me peace, but He has a specific purpose for each one of us. He knows how much we can take. I want to tell you all, all of you this day that He knows how each one of us can take things in our life. Praise the Lord. He wouldn't keep a burden upon you that you cannot bear. He knows exactly how much you can take. That's the portion that He will be giving into your life. Praise the Lord. So the good hand of the Lord according to Ezra. He had the king's favor to take the things to the temple. The king showed him mercy and gave him great permissions to do great things for the temple of the Lord. And he says that the hand of the Lord was good upon my life. Naomi says that the hand of the Lord is against me. Praise the Lord. She says that because she lost her husband, she lost her sons, she is left with her daughter-in-laws. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, whatever be your circumstance this day, whatever you are going through this day, know this, that God has a specific purpose for you. Praise the Lord. You may not become a great evangelist or a great prophet or any of the other ministries that uh, we read in the word of God, but God has a specific purpose for your life and he wants you to fulfill that purpose. And God had a specific purpose for Naomi too. As we read the word of God and as I speak today, we will see what that was and she fulfilled the purpose that was there upon her life. Praise the Lord. And you go on to verse 15. We read some comfort coming upon the life of Naomi. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 15. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her, to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. 
the lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts you with me praise the lord some comfort she receives in our life and we must know in this christian life of ours when we go through many kinds of sufferings god will arrange people in our lives who will be there to love us and to comfort us and we are here we see that one of her daughter in laws supports her and shows her love and says that she will stick to her till the time of her death praise the lord now we all may have friends but we need friends who will stick with us during the times that are low in our lives when we are low in our lives not like the friends of job job always had had friends he had three friends but when they saw him suffering they did not speak to him for the next seven days and when they started speaking they started accusing him that he is a sinner his children are sinners and all kinds of things that he did not want to hear praise the lord we need friends who would stick with us all through praise the lord whether we are doing good or doing bad in every circumstance of our life that they would support us and strengthen us and pray for us and fellowship with us praise the lord hallelujah and she finds some comfort in this young moabite woman praise the lord hallelujah and they decide to come back to the land of bethlehem because they heard that the lord had start started blessing his people again the famine was getting over and we see that they are returning to the land of bethlehem verse 19 now the two of them went until they came to bethlehem and it happened when they had come to bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them and the woman said is this naomi now all other people may get excited about us but we may remain unexcited praise the lord naomi is not in a situation where she would feel happy or pleased and the whole city is excited about her but she is not praise the lord and they started saying is this naomi the blessed one our pleasant one but she said to them do not call me naomi call me mara for the almighty has dealt very bitterly with me praise the lord here is a lady who has a good connection with her god praise the lord even though she is blaming god for many things five times she blames god in this first chapter five times she says that god has done wrong things in her life praise the lord we do not see god punishing her because she is speaking from the bitterness of her soul as job said even today my complaint is bitter i will speak in the bitterness of my soul she says that lord the hand of the lord is against me praise the lord i lost my husband i lost my sons there's nothing more left me left to me but then god started working upon her life here she tells the people who are excited do not call me naomi so many times we go to work and people greet us and we greet them back we have a good smile on our faces but we know that there is so much of grief in our hearts bitterness in our soul and they may be also in the same way they may be also living their lives praise the lord we hide many things from people from the closest to us there is only one with whom we cannot hide anything and we can be always open to our father in heaven and tell him everything praise the lord do not call me now me call me bitter call me mara for the lord has dealt very bitterly with me she could have just said that call me mara because bad things have happened in my life i lost my husband i lost my sons but she is not stopping there she says that the almighty has dealt very bitterly with me and surely the people could have said things back why did you go to the land of moab who told you to go we were all we were all staying here in bethlehem don't you know that bethlehem is the house of bread don't you know that you know god could change our circus your circumstances the circumstances of your family surely because you land you went to the land of moab you lost your husband you lost your sons praise the lord we can accuse others or others can accuse us of many things that are not right that may not have happened happened actually praise the lord 
the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We read about another woman who is very bitter in her heart. In the first book of Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. She was in the bitterness of soul, it is written. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Praise the Lord. And sometimes when we are bitter and in anguish of our souls, we say many things to God. We commit many things to God. Many people commit many things to God when they are, you know, not getting a deliverance, not getting a healing, not getting, you know, things happening in their life. When they see that things are not moving in their life, they make commitments to God. And here is a woman who is bitter in her soul and she prays to God. She weeps in anguish and says, she makes a vow and says, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because she is bitter in her soul, because there is a lot of anguish in her life, she makes a commitment to her Lord. And the thing is, if you make a commitment to the Lord, you need to keep it. Many people make commitments, but they do not keep the, those commitments to God. Praise the Lord. But God remembers all those things. If you want to get out of that contract, it is very easy. Just go to God and say that, I made a mistake. I made a mistake by saying that, kindly forgive me and God will forgive you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We read about Hezekiah who was bitter because he received a prophecy that he was going to die. Second Kings chapter 20 and verse 1 onwards. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order for your, you shall die and not live. It was not the devil who was going to kill him. God himself was telling Hezekiah, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. Praise the Lord. And you see, Hezekiah was not ready to die. He did not want to die. So he turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Praise the Lord. I believe all of us at one time or the other in our lives weep bitterly. It's not the usual weeping. We weep in the bitterness of our soul and we weep till there are no tears to flow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And here was a man who was weeping bitterly. He did not want to die. He was young. He did not want to die. He cried out to God and God changed things. So you may have received a bad prophecy in your life. That doesn't mean that everything is going to end. You can still cry out to God and God can change everything in your life. Because He is God Almighty. Jesus Christ said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Praise the Lord. You can cry out to your Savior and He can change things in your life. Praise the Lord. He is a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. I do not know to whom God is speaking this day. But remember that God has a specific purpose in your life and He wants you to fulfill that purpose that He has set upon your life. Praise the Lord. There are so many people who are, you know, going to hell without even knowing it. Or some of them with, with the knowledge that they are going to hell. You know, people say that there are around two lakh people who fall into hell each day. Praise the Lord. If you are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, remember that God has a purpose upon your life and that He wants you to fulfill that purpose. Praise the Lord. And we may not want to do all the things that God has placed in our hands. But if He has given you something to do, be faithful to Him and complete that task. Praise the Lord. We read about how Paul was mentoring Timothy and Titus. We read about the pastoral letters. And we read about a woman here who mentors 
a young woman i'll come to that shortly again we come to ruth chapter 1 and verse 21 she said that the hand of the lord was against her the lord had dealt bitterly with her verse 21 i went out full and the lord has brought me home again empty she doesn't say that i went out full and i have come back empty she says she specifically blames god for that praise the lord puts the name of the lord in that and she says i went out full and the lord has brought me home again empty i believe she must have prayed when she went to the land of moab praise the lord with all the names of god that she is taking in all her sentences and the things that she is saying we know that she is deeply attached to god and i believe that she must have prayed before going to the land of moab praise the lord hallelujah and she says that i went out full yeah she had a husband she had sons but there was a famine that's why she was going provisions were not there that's why she had gone the lord has brought me home again empty praise the lord hallelujah if you feel that this day emptiness in your life some people feel empty there's nothing there inside praise the lord but god can fill you with his spirit and he can do mighty things through you know the purpose for which god has called you fulfill that purpose and you will find satisfaction in your life maybe you're running after the wrong things praise the lord you have a calling upon your life but you are running after the wrong things but unless you come on track with the lord and then run your life with the lord walking with him you will not find satisfaction in your life praise the lord hallelujah if you feel the emptiness only god can fill that emptiness you know read about the wedding at cana in galilee where the wine was over there were six pots there jesus said fill it with water praise the lord sometimes if you just fill yourself with the word of god all that emptiness will go away meditate keep meditating on the word of god reading the word of god and you will see that the emptiness inside you going away you will feel full and when they filled it with water and jesus just said he did not pray over the water praise the lord he did not command the water to change he did not bring people together hold hands and pray for the water what did he do he just said take that and take it to the master of the ceremonies praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord he can do great and mighty miracles just fill yourself with the word as you keep filling yourself with the word the word is power praise the lord just remember that the word is power as you keep filling yourself with the word of god you will see that the emptiness in your life goes away you will be a different person you will be changed from inside i went out full and the lord has brought me home again empty in this very single verse see she blames the lord thrice the next thing that she says is why do you call me naomi since the lord has testified against me praise the lord so many things so many things she says praise the lord and you can pour out all your complaints in the presence of god we see from chapter 3 onwards in the book of job till the chapter 38 we see job pouring out pouring out pouring out all the complaints and all the bitterness that he had in his heart he was telling god you are not doing right i don't think you are doing right many things we, many times we can tell the lord the same thing god you are not doing right i feel you are not doing right he is not going to punish you he understands you he comes to job in chapter 38 and speaks to him and tells him what are you speaking you don't understand any of these things and that's what we also do we do not understand many of the workings of god in our life praise the lord so we may we may just thinking about quitting many people think about quitting everything quitting their jobs quitting your ministry quitting life praise the lord and then the lord gives us a fresh lease of hope praise the lord the bible says that 
hope does not disappoint us because the lord has put his holy spirit inside of us praise the lord so you may be thinking of quitting but the lord may be planning greater ministries in your life praise the lord you know elijah did not want to do anything after he was threatened by jezebel he said that i am going to kill you you killed 850 prophets of mine by tomorrow i will kill you and elijah did not hear the word of the lord as as he was hearing all the time and once a person who listens and hears the word of god the voice of the lord always and does not hear the voice of god he gets frightened and elijah was frightened he was full of fear and he ran into the wilderness of birshipa sits under a broom tree and cries out to the lord enough enough lord he says praise the lord let me die praise the lord why do you call me naomi since the lord has testified against me elijah he goes for a journey that he shouldn't be going but the angel of the lord he says strengthen him and says you have a long journey to go elijah had already decided to go to the mount horeb or mount sinai to search for the presence of the lord there sometimes we may think that god is in a specific place praise the lord that's why people go on pilgrimages they go to places where other people say that they found god and experienced god but god is there right with you wherever you are you call out to him and he is there by your side whether you believe it or not praise the lord hallelujah and elijah he goes into a cave and hides there and the lord comes to him and asks him and god does not come for the specific purpose for which elijah had gone there but god comes and calls to him and says what are you doing here praise the lord i mean we would have expected god to speak some kind words comforting words thank you yesterday for preaching for me and uh, you know bringing so many people to me and killing all the false prophets i could have said all those things but we do not see god saying any of those things no thank yous praise the lord he says what are you doing here and we may sometimes think that the god is god is very harsh and very strict praise the lord he is always doing good things for our life hallelujah he has always good in his mind regarding our lives whether we may understand it or not hallelujah praise the lord at the end of our lives when we stand before jesus and we think about the things that we have gone through in our life and we desire to ask him why he'll tell us he'll give us the answers but i think in inter- eternity we may not need any answers because there everything will be different you will need no answers for your questions praise the lord what are you doing here elijah god says and sends him back to do his ministry praise the lord to appoint another prophet in his place and anoint kings praise the lord and god has great purposes for your lives too find out that purpose if you know the purpose fulfill that purpose that will give you satisfaction in your life praise the lord why do you call me naomi since the lord has testified against me god is testifying she says that god is testifying by doing all these things he is testifying that you know i am no good praise the lord and you may think that you are no good but god is good remember that and he can do great things through you and finally she says, says something about god since the lord has testified against me and the almighty has afflicted me praise the lord that's the fifth thing that she says about god almighty it is god himself who has afflicted me those who are very close to god they know that no affliction can come to them unless god allows it upon their lives praise the lord so everything that they say is again in relationship with god and that's how job also speaks he speaks everything you know in his relationship with god and he says that god has sent his arrows upon me and has afflicted me he's put all his poison arrows in me 
praise the lord hallelujah and the almighty has afflicted me but then god gives a purpose for her life praise the lord she has a daughter in law with her now and she starts mentoring this daughter in law praise the lord hallelujah specifically if god has spoken to you regarding someone a god has put someone under you you need to mentor that person or persons so that they may know the lord more praise the lord they may not understand things about the kingdom but you need to bring them closer to god so that god's purpose in their lives also will be fulfilled praise the lord and we know about boaz and how ruth met boaz and all those things i'm not going to speak about that today because i'm speaking about naomi when we turn to ruth chapter 3 and verse 3 onwards she gives some specific advice to ruth she tells ruth this is after ruth went to boaz field and she was there she says to ruth at the time of the harvest therefore wash yourself and anoint yourself put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do and she said to her ruth said to her all that you say to me i will do praise the lord and she has started something that god had in mind always praise the lord you know our vision may be limited but god sees far away another 5 years another 10 years god is seeing all the things that is going to happen in our lives and in the life of others whom we are going to touch and he works in that way though we cannot see it we cannot see his eternal purposes we can see only what is happening today or perhaps tomorrow he sees everything in the eternal perspective praise the lord and he here even before ruth marries boaz and before obed is born and before jesse is born and before david is born and before jesus christ is born he knows the eternal purpose praise the lord hallelujah if you do not know the purpose for which god has called you that should be your first prayer from today onwards reveal to me the purpose for which you have called me to your kingdom praise the lord hallelujah give me a clear vision of what you want me to do praise the lord and he will reveal his purpose perhaps perhaps you are praying for wrong things but when you pray for the purpose for which god has called you to things will fall into place things will start moving like you have never imagined before and god speaks through naomi to ruth and she starts speaking to her and telling her what to do and what not to do also praise the lord here she tells her wash yourself anoint yourself put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor she can see things happening in the life of ruth praise the lord and ruth does exactly what she is told to do we see paul writing lengthy letters to timothy praise the lord 1 timothy or 1 timothy we read about six chapters he is giving ad- advices advices and advices second timothy four chapters of advices titus three chapters of advices praise the lord hallelujah he is trying to mentor those young pastors so that they may do good in their lives that they may they may be built up and they may become strong workers for the lord strong pastors for the lord hallelujah praise the lord and you can immediately know those people whom you will mentor and grow up under you they won't resist you praise the lord they'll start learning from you and they would have the desire to learn from you praise the lord and then ruth does exactly as what naomi tells her she goes and then boab boas speaks to her kindly at the end of the chapter we read earlier she told ruth do these these things and verse 18 she says then she said 
Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you need to do, sometimes you need to rest also. And here now we tell Ruth, sit still, my daughter. Praise the Lord. She starts mentoring this person who is under her. She is not, you know, leading the whole of Jerusalem to the God Almighty or anything, but she has a specific purpose upon her life and she is fulfilling that purpose in her life. Later on, we know about what Boaz did. And finally, it happened in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 13 onwards. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Miraculously, what the people saying say are something different. It's not that Ruth has a child or Boaz has a child. Verse 14, Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative and may his name be famous in Israel and may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you who is better to you than seven sons has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and became a nurse to her, him. And also the neighbor woman came saying, there is a son born to Naomi. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that verse in the book of Ruth. But the people come together and say that there is a son born to Naomi and they call his name Obed. A woman who had suffered so much in her life, gone through so much of bitterness in her life, all the bitterness she wanted to pour out and she poured out specifically mentioning God Almighty in all those things. The hand of the Lord is against me, she said. Praise the Lord. She said that the Lord has afflicted. The Lord had brought her back empty. The Lord had testified against her. But God gave her a purpose in life. He gave her a daughter-in-law. And then she mentored this daughter-in-law to do good things in the life of other people. Praise the Lord. God changed that bitterness that was there in her heart by again, again giving her a purpose in her life. God removed the emptiness in her life and gave her joy and satisfaction. In the first book of Peter, chapter 5 and verse 10, we read this. And may the Holy Spirit minister to us through, his, through these words. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So whatever you are going through this day, if you are tired, if you are sick, if you are weak, if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling empty, if you are feeling bitterness in your soul, you can give it all to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because He can take all those things and then change everything for good in your life. Praise the Lord. We see how He did it in the life of Job. We read about so many persons of God, saints of God who suffered and God changed everything in their lives in their end. Remember this day that the God of all grace, and we must all know that He has called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After we have suffered a little while, He will perfect us, establish us, strengthen us and settle us. Praise the Lord. May God, you know, strengthen you and establish you and perfect you and settle you. Let us all bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come into your holy presence once again this morning. Thank you for blessing us with your presence, O Lord, this day. Thank you that you are with us continually. You are Emmanuel, God with us, never leaving us nor forsaking us, O Lord. And each of us have been called to your kingdom with a purpose, O Lord. Help us to find that purpose and fulfill that purpose, O Lord. Thank you for speaking us to us this day, O Lord, through the life of Job, through the life of Naomi. 
Thank you, Jesus, that you gave them a purpose in their lives, O Lord. When they had bitterness in their lives, you changed everything, O Lord. And though they felt empty, O Lord, and bitter, O Lord, and afflicted, O Lord, and that you had testified against them, and though they thought that the hand of the Lord was against them, O Lord, you still restored them, O Lord, and pray for each and every one of us who feel like that this day, O Lord, that you may strengthen us this day, O Lord, establish us, settle us, O Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you will do it in each of our lives. For those who have not yet found the purpose for which God has called them, reveal that purpose to them, O Lord. Speak to them through your Holy Spirit, O Lord. Help us to grow more in Christ, O Lord. Fill ourselves with the Word of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be faithful witnesses, O Lord, for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.